Hey, welcome. This is Brian Johnson. Welcome to my live Facebook training on Wednesday night, and I'm super enthusiastic that you're here for part two of my series, How to Eliminate Self-Sabotage Once and for All. I know. I know it sounds a little crazy, maybe even a bit impossible. And what I invite you to consider is this. I see this information that I'm going to share with you tonight create miracles consistently on a daily basis. I've seen it so many times that I do not even doubt it. That's how frequent this information pulls through for me. So um, have an, I'm looking forward to connecting with each of you. Make sure if this is your first time, type first timer in the little message box below. That way I can make sure and connect with you. And just so you know, I am around Facebook all day. I'm constantly plugged in between myself and my assistant and my business partner. So it is easy to get a hold of us. Matter of fact, I connect and reach out to people on my Facebook trainings to talk to them, to touch base with them, to create a relationship with you so I understand how to best support you. So if you would like to speed that process up, make sure you message me. If not, just put first timer. And as you'll see throughout the week as people are coming back and my replay viewers are watching my training, I am extremely interactive and it's most important for me to connect with you so I know how to best serve you. Naturally, that's what you want, right? Of course. You want to make sure you have the tools and the skill sets that make a difference now. I'm not talking about two weeks from now. I'm not talking about when you use these skill sets specifically, you're going to feel better immediately. I'm all about instant gratification. Legally, of course. Right? So step one. First time, type first timer. If this is your first time and you're not on our email list, make sure you get on it. You can go to step one, get my seven free videos, and you can also get all of my notes for my trainings because I print them out so you can use them as a workbook to follow along, all right? So let's actually get into this. And I think it's important for you to understand you more than likely already know I'm the guy who does the purple sweet potato video. I'm the guy who's in the grocery store shooting videos on how to reverse certain illnesses and symptoms. And honestly, um, all that is fine and dandy because what you don't know is I'm extremely passionate about what I do and why I do it. I've got a lot of time invested in this and I am super enthusiastic about sharing all of it with you. So it's important for you also to understand that what you don't know about me is that I've more than likely, if you aren't connected with me and have not been for a while, um, I have been 250 pounds three different times. I've been suicidal. I've had drug addictions in the past. I've had lots of uh, crazy experiences. And to say that I'm blessed to be here speaking with you is an understatement. Uh, so this is why I do what I do, to give back, to share, because I've seen people from all over the world with different illnesses and different issues. I've seen miracles happen consistently with what I'm going to share with you tonight. My, so my invitation to you is to suspend your disbelief, and allow me to present some information to you. See if it resonates with you. See if it makes sense. Pay attention to how you feel. Your mind, your subconscious mind, your higher self knows the truth. And when you hear it, there you have it. <clears throat> I, Maria, am 38 years young. So let's get started. I'm on step one of my notes. What's up, Danny? So here you go. So it's important to understand if you do not understand how sabotage shows up, that's challenge number one. Because if you're not even sure or aware that you're sabotaging yourself, how are you going to change it? You're not. Most people don't even know they're sabotaging themselves or they do and they just have no idea there's an option to not do that and to turn your sabotage into your self-empowerment. Hey, Danny, how have you been enjoying our, our uh Emotional Breakthrough Series, because I know you're right in the middle of it right now. So check it out. So here are some upper limits challenges that you may recognize in your life right now, because I'm all about creating miracles. And if you're serious, hey mom, I love you. And if you're on my training, then obviously you're looking for results and you're looking for answers and you have a great place for the both of those. So here you go. If you are experiencing any of these, you're having upper limits challenges or sabotage patterns. So here we go in no particular order. And of course, as always, no judgment. You're in a secure space. Okay. So upper limits challenges, physical health, <clears throat> pain, symptoms, dis-ease, I like to say, or disease. Dis-ease is the return or the, re or the leaving absent of uh, 
ease. Disease just means there's uncomfort somewhere specifically, emotionally, typically. So we'll talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> we also talk about poverty, mom, dad stories, cyclical experiences in relationships, like having relationships that keep repeating themselves. Maybe there's abuse. Maybe there's verbal abuse. Maybe there's mental abuse. Maybe there's a constant cyclical experience of someone leaving or you fearing someone leaving. And then all of a sudden when they leave, you know that you got, you're validated because you knew they were going to leave. That's what happens. And you're like, I knew it. It's because you're creating that. Okay, to validate what you're choosing to experience. I don't know if you caught this, but if you caught my training last week where I talked about Dr. Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief, he talked about specifically and how he actually proved that we are products of our experiences and our environment, aka our perception. Whatever we think, we experience. The same person could be on the other side of the world having an amazing day and everything amazing is happening to him and the same person the day later could be thinking negative thoughts and patterns and all of a sudden have some different experiences. So we are 100% creating every bit of our experience and my invitation to you is to trust me, follow my advice, make a decision now to be open-minded because I am going to share some things with you that may be a little out of your box. And just so you understand, it's not your fault. I'm going to say it again. It's not your fault as to why you're showing up the certain ways that you are in your life. Like if you're not experiencing heaven on earth and you're having abundance in your finances, having abundance in your health, having abundance relationships, my suggestion to you is to understand this is available to you first and then figure out how to reverse engineer it. Your thoughts, your experiences, the way you feel about certain things, all of those things are dictating what you are experiencing now as well as tomorrow. Now, the beauty of that is this. Once you understand that, you can actually make a shift. And here's what it's going to take. It's going to take you taking full responsibility for exactly where you are at right now, no matter what it is and what has happened. Are you open-minded to receiving that? And, capital A and D, are you open-minded to walking forward in that truth? If you are, say yes. What's up, Audrey Nicole? So, all right, yes on the table. Because right now, in order for you to move forward and be successful and to actually receive the seeds that I'm sowing in you is going to be by you giving yourself full permission to step into your full responsibility. Response-ability, not reaction and as human beings, we all have it. It's just a part of our journey. And when you understand that, life becomes to be more of a game. And understand, there's always going to be things that happen with life. And hey, if you haven't shared and you feel called, please do. I really appreciate it and thank you. And so does the person that does not know they're about to hop on because I never know who it's going to be. All right, so we're on step two. For those of you following around in my notes right now, we are on step two. Okay? And I'm going to go through these fast because this is a little recap from part one. I'm just giving you a touch over. And then we're going to dig into tonight's stuff. Okay? So identifying your current reality, meaning what emotion am I putting out? Where are certain feelings and experiences showing up in my body and how can I indicate what they are? How do I know if I'm having anger? How do I know if I'm having fear? How do I know if I'm having uh, sorrow? All this shows up in our body, right? In body language. How do you know? Specifically because if you're getting more experiences in the form of people, experiences, situations, events and circumstances that show up and that are creating feelings of anger, pain, sorrow, resentment. That's going to tell you exactly what's operating internally. And the beauty of that is once you recognize that, you can shift it. Okay? Now, all things under heaven have a purpose. So no matter what you have been through, make no mistake, just like I am here before of you today, all of these experiences in your life have a purpose. So love them. Get the message Forget the mess. Get out of the mistake. Get the message. Forget the mistake. That's important because if not, you will keep creating the same thing over and over again. Okay? So here we go. Part number three. We already talked about this just for a second. And it's not your fault. And it's important for you to understand that our society and the people that be, the quote unquote, the powers that be, do not desire, do not want, do not want you to think anything about you being a 
super conscious human being and you having the wisdom to empower yourself. That would rather you think that it's not your fault because then you're a victim. If you're a victim, you cannot create everything and you're just like, woe is me and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills and I don't know about my health and the government's going to take care of me. That doesn't work. What that creates is a bunch of dependent people. You are not a dependent individual. And as soon as you take responsibility for what's happened in your life, you can start to eliminate your sabotage. But, or and, or both, until you realize that, you're going to keep showing up as a victim. And things are going to keep happening to you. If you have any left-sided issues on your body, that means you more than likely have some situations that have not been resolved in the form of a victimhood forgiveness all kinds of stuff. We can talk about that. If you're serious about it, not curious, serious about it, message me and I'll set up a time to have a conversation with you and provide some value for you for free. Okay, so here we go. Step four, it is your responsibility. Me at 17, I remember driving down the road at 17 years old, telling myself verbally, today, Brian, is the day you're going to take full responsibility for yourself. That means whatever happens in your life, this is what you get to do. So that's what I remember having that very awesome conversation with myself at 17. And it's important. My mom's on here right now. She'll get, she'll get a kick out of this. I have on here for point number one on step five on my notes in case you have them. Uh, attitude. The big A. Attitude is key. I assure you and I will tell you with everything that I understand myself to be that attitude has been the one thing that has allowed me to thrive through some very unthrivable experiences, if you will. <laughs> so attitude is one of the most important things. And naturally, I'm sure you would agree. And if you do agree, type a yes. Yes for the big A, mom, I love you. So here's the next part on step number five. Conscious language. Pay attention to this. Most people are completely asleep. When I say asleep, I'm not talking about driving at the wheel. I'm talking about mentally asleep, meaning the things they do, the things they put in their body, the shows that they watch, the information they put in their brain, the people they hang out with are asleep. You can tell by what they are saying. They have no clue most of the time what they're actually even speaking because if you knew some of the words that you were speaking, and hey, look, I'm not pointing a finger. I got three pointing back in case you know. These are things I've learned on my journey and I used to be completely asleep. Things that I would say and I wasn't even questioning them. Like how many times when you say something, you say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but whatever. I don't know. Pay attention because I promise you, you're going to say it a lot. And here's what happens. That is an unconscious response that shuts your subconscious mind down immediately because it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm going to say that again. When somebody asks you a question and you say, I don't know, and could say, I choose to know, or I give myself permission to know, I don't know, is a self-fulfilling prophecy, which means as soon as you spit that out of your word or think it, most of the time it's an unconscious automatic response, period. My coach got me one day. He goes, you know what, Brian? I have no interest in furthering any conversation with anything you do not know. And I was like, well, that's pretty good. I like that. I'll use it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. May I have another? It's exactly what it was. So think about that. I don't know. I give myself permission to know because when you say that, being unconscious, you're literally shutting down your subconscious's ability to retrieve the information from the ethers that is available to you here and now. Okay? Here are some examples. Wanting versus choosing. If you take a deep breath for a second and you say out loud, I want. Pay attention to your throat and your chest. Say, I want. When I say I want, my chest closes off just a little bit and unless you were awake and even knew this was going on, you're not going to get it. I've had some people that I've had conversations today from the land of Facebooks from this specific stream that I did on Monday that have been told or shut down their ability to feel their feelings when they were real young and I asked them to check in after all the stuff that they had going on in their life in the form of experiences and trauma and things like that. And they weren't experiencing any tightness in any of these, any of their areas of their body, which I was like, all right, they're disconnected. So first off, I get to, get, I get to help them connect. I get to help them to give themselves permission to come back home and to be secure in their body. Because I, until I was able to do that, I couldn't even get them to understand what they really felt and what was going on because they had shoved it down so far and disconnected due to the pain that they experienced. My invitation to you is this right now. If you are a human being, and you're watching my training, ask yourself, 
Have I shut down my feelings at any point in time? If you have, it's okay. Next question is, I get or next statement is, I give myself permission to feel my feelings because that is the most important thing in life. That's what God created our feelings for, to squeeze the juice out of life. That is your radar. That is your uh, tracking device. That lets you know where you're at in life because if you have bad feelings, you're having bad thoughts. If you're having enthusiastic feelings, you're having great thoughts. Understanding that and being able to connect that with your body is a huge advocate to you being a thriving human being. And undoubtedly, that's what you're looking, really looking for, right? Of course. Or you wouldn't be here investing your time with me at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night, mind you. So awesome. So want versus choose. I want. Here's an easy Jedi shift. I choose. And you know what's funny? is it doesn't even cost you anything other than you understanding the word to shift it when you use it in sentences or in your daily communication. So anytime you say, I want, you literally are saying, I agree with not having. Okay, I agree with not having. Obviously, anytime you want something, you really desire to have it. Your outcome is to have that in your hand, tangibly, hold it, feel it, spend it, invest it, whatever it is, right? So I choose... Did you see how my body went forward and my voice went up? I didn't consciously do that. That's my body feeling empowered. That's how that works, okay? Recognizing sabotage through body language, language code, body tightness, and pains. Our bodies are amazing pieces of human machinery, divinely orchestrated by the man slash woman himself, okay? Every time that you do one of these or one of these or one of these, or one of these. That means something emotionally. Imagine this. Imagine driving down the road in your car and your body is talking to you. It is literally scratching and it's gonna be doing this a lot. It's doing this all day long. My question to you is, have you ever really noticed that? Do you think you just itched to itch? Pretty interesting, right? Well, once you understand that, it's going to open your eyes to a whole nother world that you have not even been paying attention to. I didn't even know about it until I was taught it. I was like, oh my gosh, you can sit in the mall and figure out all this stuff and people watch and love on them and vote their victory and figure out where they're glitched at and where they're off their mark. Yes, 100%. That's exactly what you can do. Okay. So, my first experience with body language, for those of you that know, uh, Mom, this will be interesting for you if you're so long and can see it. So, when I was in class here in, in, my, in Austin, Texas, in my body language class, this is how it's first introduced to body language. I was in class and I was sitting there and there was a girl that was talking to our coach and while she's talking, I'm scratching my arm like big time. Like, I literally don't even think I had a tattoo there then. I was scratching my arm big time. It was completely red. I knew, okay something's up. I just wasn't sure what. I wasn't that skilled in body language yet as I am now, okay? So I was like, well, I'm going to ask my coach. I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to be uncomfortable and I'm going to give myself permission and I'm going to go and talk to him. Whoa. So I went over and talked to my coach at break and I was like, hey, Bob, I was like, you know, what does this and this mean? Literally about four to five words out of my mouth, he asked me, how long have you had a death wish, Brian? I was like, wow, I'm 32 years old, canceled, 32 years young, and this happened when I was 20, so 12 years. For 12 years, I thought that I loved myself, and I did not. 12 years, I thought that I had made it through the experience that created the pain in my life, and subconsciously, I had not. I was still physically on the planet, yet completely disconnected, completely unaware that I did not love myself. Now, looking back at some of the experiences that I created for myself, I definitely could tell you that I did not love myself. And it's okay. So for the next 22 minutes, my coach coaches me back into my experience of me loving myself. It was the craziest thing I had ever experienced because 
In body language, your left bicep represents your stomach and that's sorrow. And this is your left female side. So he knew for a fact that I had an issue with a past relationship of with a female, a former partner. That's how fast he picked this up. He picked it up out of four words out of my mouth too. Now let me ask you this. How important would it be for you in your life to have a skill set that allowed you that type of understanding about yourself so you can figure out where you're off your mark? If you have any unforgiveness with a, por a former partner, if you have any unforgiveness with mom or dad or maybe some resentment or maybe not understanding why you're trapped and your back is all jacked up or maybe not understanding why you're not sleeping between the hours of one and three, maybe not understanding why you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, maybe understanding why your weight is completely stagnant and stuck because you're having anger in your life that's unresolved, wondering why your kneecap is getting sawed off and you got to get a new one because you've got unforgiveness in your life. How important would that be to know that so you don't have to go to the medical system who's going to do that? Holy cow! That's a lot of serious money that's wasted on something that's emotional. Then they label it and they give it a name so they can treat it and then you're really screwed. I have unfortunately heard more people come into hospitals and get staph infection in the hospital than people going to the, the, the hospital for staph infection. What is that? My encouragement to you is to seriously take your health by the horns and to understand some things that God has available to you and for you. If you do not make time for your wellness, you will make time for your illness. And I assure you, it's going to cost you exponentially more than you investing in yourself now, in your time, and in your money to make sure that you do not have to end up in that place. And I love you. And you can obviously see that I'm passionate about this because I have seen so many lives wrecked and I've seen so many miracles happen on just the opposite side with the basic stuff that I'm sharing with you right now and teaching you and allowing you to learn for yourself. Naturally, you can see how big of an impact that's going to make in your life. You probably already understand and feel like this guy is crazy. I'm absolutely crazy. And it's okay. You have to be nowadays to be successful. You got to be a bit crazy. It's completely all right. There's degrees. I'm not medicated. I'm completely normal crazy, whatever that means. <laughs> all right. So here we go. So we just talked about my death wish story. Now we're going to talk about Abra. This is the technique that I made to share with you so you have an easy way to remember it. Once again, if you're not on my email list, you need my notes. This has everything. This has all the gold step by step of exactly what to do and how to do it. Abra stands for abracadabra. A stands for acknowledge. B stands for breathe. Release stands for R. Realign is the second R. And the last A is appreciation. Now, what exactly does that mean, Brian? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Here's what it means. Acknowledge means that if you, say for example, you are having an issue with anger. Let's say a former partner. If you think about it, him or her, and you really get jazzed up and you get angry. So let's do some work on it. You like my jug? Riley designed it for me. <laughs> I'm blessed and highly favored. Cheers. And so are you. All right, so here we go. The A stands for acknowledge. That means to scan your body and understand that if you feel anger, knowing where it shows up at, that means you're being emotionally literate by utilizing body language and being accurate. Anger shows up in your back and your neck as tightness. Okay, awesome. I have some anger. All right, that's A. Breathe. Breathe down into your stomach. So that allows you to settle into your body and it allows God's spirit to come in you and to inspire you and raise your emotional vibration due to the resonancy of your cells through the oxygen that you're pumping into them. Highest vibration you can get. Love and oxygen, okay? Breathe, release. So what that means is anger is I'm going to love my anger into my forgiveness. That's release and realign. I'm going to reclaim my authority, which is the energy back to my thyroid. 
And then I'm going to appreciate the fact that I understood the skill sets and I'm thankful for the exact experience that happened so I could grow off of it and to use that information to move forward in my life and to set that other individual free. Because what most people don't understand is that when someone is angry or has anger or resentment or unforgiveness, that's like drinking poison and expecting the person you're pissed off about to get sick. It doesn't work that way. There is no difference between me and you subconsciously. My subconscious does not know me and you. It knows us being one individual. So when I have something going on, if I am not letting go of that, it's totally impacting me. If that makes sense for you, just type a yes or type a question somewhere in the box and let's see where everyone's at right now. Or let's see where you're at specifically. And I'm going to go a little bit over. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish everything tonight. Uh, hopefully you are getting some good value. I trust you're getting some great value out of this because this very information is what's going to create miracles in your life consistently, hands down. Okay, so here we go. So Abra is the, is the tool that I created, Abra Cadabra. Okay, you have it. So now I'm going to share with you some of my favorite things I review on a daily basis basis. If you have my notes, these are on there. If you do not, make sure that you write these down because these are going to be extremely helpful for you. I'm opening up my computer right now so I can see if there's any questions. As I sit here scratching now that you're talking about, hey Erica, I couldn't see any of my questions. Everybody's on there now. Hey Erica, Audrey. Uh, so all right, so here we go. These are some of my favorite things. Like these are rider downers. If you use these, these will create miracles in your life. I promise you, or you can have your money back. <laughs> Here you go. Only love and enthusiasm make me magnetic to my own good. That is a fact. When you are love and enthusiastic, you are magnetic to your good. Good things will come to you. Good people will show up to help you on your mission. You will function in ease and flow. And it hasn't always been that way for me. There's things you get to clear out. You get to connect back with God. You get to be fully integrated to step into pure love and enthusiasm. It's a journey for all of us. And it's not an event. An event means you do the work and then you're there and you celebrate and you're done. It's not how it works. Every day I'm constantly growing. I'm constantly doing mindset stuff. Constantly doing Abra to shift emotions as I go through my life experiences being the best version of myself. And when I'm not understanding how to recognize it, understanding the skill set to implement, and understanding how to validate the fact that my body just took that code and now I'm moving forward through itches or scratches and confirmation validating my movement forward. Naturally, you can see how big of an impact that will make in your life, right? Yes, me too. All right, so how much love and abundance are you willing to allow? This is huge. How much love and abundance are you willing to allow before you screw it up, before you sabotage yourself and you're like, nah, I can't handle all this love and enthusiasm in my life before I destroy it. It's okay. That's called an upper limit challenge. And honestly, most of us as human beings have some of that on some level, some more than others. And honestly, if you are serious, not curious, serious about figuring out where you are glitched at and where you're off your mark and you are open-minded to having a conversation, uh, reach out to me and let's chat because I can help you with that fast. I'm not, thank God, not nothing I did, just understanding it and just allowing him to do it through me. That's how we show up. That's how we do it, okay? Number two, three. Where am I getting in my own way from achieving this? So you have, how much love and abundance am I willing to allow? Where am I getting in my own way and not even allowing myself to receive this? What will make, this is my favorite, what will make my experience even better right now? That's one of my favorites because what that intends and what that is automatically saying is that you already feel great. How could you feel even better? Breathing. Maybe there's some essential oils. Maybe there's some crystals. There's all kinds of different things on God's planet that you can use. Oxygen is free. It's free. Just breathe it. Anytime you ask yourself, how can I feel even better right now? Breathing is always number one. That is a fastest way to raise your vibration. That, and then guess what's number two? Water. Let's have some. Air, water, food, and consciousness. Man, that water's great. I'm so grateful. All right, so living my thriving life 
requires my full enthusiastic participation. Yours too. As Bob Tennyson Stevens would say, one of my favorite coaches, play at 125%. Now and now and now. And when is now a good time to give yourself permission to thrive? Literally, you're going to get to make a conscious choice right now. Decide means to cut off anything less than your best. Mediocrity is not even an option anymore. If you're truly looking to thrive, type a yes in the comments section because now you've got some public accountability and we're going to love on you and we're going to support you and we're going to make sure that happens for you and you get to make sure you show up fully 100% lovingly. Yes. Awesome. Type a yes if you're in. To continue to have more and more greatness, appreciation, gratitude, and thankfulness is mandatory or no soup for you. <laughs> those Seinfeld lovers, it's important, it's crucial to make sure that if you're looking to have more greatness and more massive just blessings in your life, you must be grateful. You must appreciate. I do that on the hour and I can tell you that it is a massive multiplier in your outcomes. Okay? Massive multiplier in your outcomes. And that's why at the end of Abra, A-B-R-R-A, at the end of it, I have appreciation, which take that, takes the experience that I had. And once I shift my pattern, I uplift myself as high as possible to make sure that I'm raising my emotional frequency. So I'm experiencing more love, more joy, more enthusiasm, more thriving health, more fulfilled relationships, more money, more allowing God to work through me, more money that I can tithe with and help people who are in less fortunate positions. All of this hinges upon appreciation and gratitude. Little hinges swing big doors. Okay? Shift to the mindset of, I am already what I desire to be. Do not look for my manifestation as this is simply a form of doubt. People filled, already supplied, or be filled, already supplied in your manifested choice, in your hands, using it. This is a total Jedi shift. And I'm not going to take take credit for that. That is a Bob Stevens special that I wrote down in my affirmations to position my thinking from a different place of already passing and collapsing time to receive and be all that I desire to be today versus 10 years from now. I'm going to read that to you one more time because I have a feeling this is extremely important for you. So turn your thinking caps on. Let's do it. Ready? Put your left ear close to your phone. This is your receiving ear. Here you go. Shift to the mindset of, I am already what I desire to be. And let this sink in. Ready? I am already what I desire to be. And just say that with me out loud one time. Ready? I am already what I desire to be. I am already what I desire to be. Yes. Do not look for your manifestation. Once you create something, be thankful and already start appreciating it. Already start loving it. Already start using it. When we look for it to see where it's at, that's a form of doubt because it hasn't shown up yet, which automatically lowers your feeling world. It lowers your vibration. And instead, when you can cast your thought and cast your vision, amplify your emotions to boost up your enthusiasm to feel great, now you're getting your vibration up to where you can bring these experiences in your life and you're actually going to create them because you're congruently aligned. Did that make sense for you? Because that's some very in-depth information that I pulled from the depths and brought to a palatable level. So hopefully it was something that you understand because here's the deal. It doesn't matter what you're thinking. If you feel bad about it, guess what? You're not getting it. You're going to get more bad experiences that are going to equal the same feeling you're putting out. So when you think of something great, feel great about it. Picture the best day you ever had and generate that feeling in your chest and in your heart. Now you're actually going to raise your emotional equivalency so you can start creating the, the people, the circumstances, situations, and events that create more enthusiasm and great feelings and experiences. Most people have things they haven't, res haven't forgiven, haven't resolved. Look at mine. I didn't know I loved myself for 12 years. Check it out. If I ask you, do you love yourself right now, what's your answer? 
If I ask you, do you love yourself right now, what is your answer? And we're almost done, so hang tight, like maybe three more minutes, and I love you. I invite you to ride it out with me. If I ask you, do you love yourself, what is your response? Because check it out, if it's anything other than yes, it's a no. If it's a yeah, if it's a sure, if it's an absolutely, that's a no. Not mad at you, just being completely straight with you. Same thing that my coach did to me. And I'm so grateful that he showed up and stood in his strength to support me and bring me up. All I'm looking to do is give you a hand to help you up. I'm not trying to give you a handout. Okay? So if you don't love yourself, the first thing that we get to do is figure out why you don't and when it happened for the first time. Which means if you don't understand that and you're serious, not curious about finding out where you're off your mark, naturally... Message me. Let's have a conversation. Why wait another 10 or 15 years doing stuff that you don't like or not happy about? Do something today. Empower yourself with the truth to make a decision. Why invest any more time living anything less than what you know is available to you? That is insanity. Especially now that you understand it's not your fault. And it is now your responsibility. Anything that you create moving forward, you are 100% aware at this moment in time that you are creating it. Why not choose the best? It's the same amount of freaking work. It's like chasing million dollar deals versus seven dollar deals. It's the same amount of work. It's just with a different person. Go for the gusto. You're gonna nose just the same either way. Hopefully you understood it. What did did that make sense? I kind of went on two little tangents. They all go together. And did that make sense for you? Kind of amped up today, man. This was my little pool visit with my family. All right. I'm going to read all of our things here in a minute, all of our questions. I'm going to wrap this up in a second. So here we go. Last thing, okay? If you really enjoyed my chat tonight and you enjoyed the wisdom that I share with you, you have an opportunity. So Audrey, Danny, for those of you that have actually taken or are actually in the power or in the process of taking my emotional breakthrough series, would you do me a favor and help your family members out and put something as to what you thought was value or if it's even worth even investing in? I'm okay with the truth. I prefer the truth, even if it does sting for a moment. So what I'm offering you is this. You have an opportunity now to make a decision. You also have the opportunity to not make a decision. Here's a decision you get to make. If you are committed to being your best, and naturally the information that I shared with you tonight resonated with you, that's the only way I would suggest you move forward. If it didn't, then don't waste your time and don't waste your money. Okay? If it did make sense to you, my invitation to you is to join me. It's to trust me. It's to follow my advice. It's to make a decision now to invest in yourself, in your health, and in your wellness through the skill sets that are offered in our Emotional Breakthrough Series. Today, you can get it for $300 off for $197. It's typically a $497 program. And if you are experiencing sabotage, if you are experiencing weight challenges, if you are experiencing high stress levels at work in your relationship, broken relationships, broken relationships with mom and dad, and just really desiring to be your best and know you're made for more and just don't understand how to get there, you are who I'm speaking with right now. Here's the deal. Take action. Go to step two and here's the most important part. I desire to have a conversation with you as soon as you enlist. I'd love to connect with you and find out exactly what's going on in your life so I can help you now and then I can get you settled into our program so you can dig in. And here's the thing. I have a 100% guarantee on our products. If it doesn't work and you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. All you got to do is call me and say, Brian, that just didn't work for me. Done deal. You have nothing to lose. Although, on step the other hand, you have a lot to lose. Because what happens if you just say, you know what? I don't know if that's going to work for me. Okay? I don't know if that's going to work. So I'm not going to make a decision right now. Okay. So here's option B. Say, for example, you don't make a decision now. And you wait one year from now making no changes. How are you going to feel about your progress or lack of, potentially, in your life? Are you going to be okay 
with passing up on a $197 investment to live a mediocre life for the next year until you realize, man, I maybe should have made some adjustments the last year ago and things could have been a lot different a long time ago. Really what my concern is for you is my choice is obviously for you to take this opportunity and to trust me and to invest in yourself because naturally I don't want to see any of you pass up and miss what's available to you and waste a year of you not being your best and not understanding what to do to find out where you're off your mark. Until I was shown by my coach, I didn't know. I've invested a lot of money in my education and a, over 100,000 hours in learning the skill sets I'm sharing with you. If you trust me, make a decision and follow my advice, I assure you or give you your money back that you will experience results period. If you're interested in following that, take action. Go to step two above in my post. That's all I have tonight. Message me after you enlist. That way you and I can set up a time to chat and let's get you going in the right direction. I love you. I appreciate you all my veterans and all my newbies. Thank you so much for investing in yourself and allowing me to invest in you. I appreciate you. I vote your victory. And remember, if you don't make time for your wellness, you will make time for your illness every time. <laughs> Bye.